I don't bail, I don't bail, I won't see inside a cell Shout out thugger, free my slime, slat slat, YSL They tryna lock me up but I'm plugged in in ATL Got homies doing life in jail, they living in hell These DAs acting silly, my mugshot is worth a billy So some merchant made a milli, shot me milli out in Philly Shot the baby, shot the salsa, Benny Butcher, them my rollers Called me racist but these rappers riding with me, them my soldiers Maga, 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 I am not who they are after I'm just in the way they want to get to you But I won't let them cold hearted No, I'm artist, getting back to where I started I don't need to do the race I'ma beat them Rico charges And if I go to prison, you can't do me like the Clintons I'll be laid up, eating steak with Secret Service chilling, screaming, orange man bad The whole world mad, thug life Shout out all of my MAGA base sheds Coming for the deep state I will stop the new world order what is going on youtube it's brendan from market makers i'm alive i survived continue to survive big disaster area i warned you last video that may be my last video for that past week because of the hurricane i was in a direct path of the hurricane even though i'm just about an hour inland this hurricane did more damage to property in my area or particularly my house and ranch than any hurricane that i've been in and i've been in florida my whole life and as you guys know have been watching the channel i was in naples and fort myers for the last hurricane apparently i attract hurricanes but I was only about 20 minutes from the beach down in Naples and it was a lot less damage and largely because of the wind that we had. So I had a gigantic hundred year old plus pecan tree fall on my porch on the side of the house, knock out a bunch of bricks on the house, destroy the hurricane proof porch, which was not pecan tree proof. Multi-ton trees is a massive tree. I have, I have demolition team coming out for that. We didn't have power. Fortunately, I have a whole house generator. I have a solar backup. The solar backup that didn't work, but the propane worked. So I had power, but the T-Mobile tower was damaged. I was very, very limited on internet, but everything is back up and running now. But because I have so many crews out this week, guys, this may be my only video this week. I'll try to do a weekend update as well. And of course, I'll be active as always in the Discord. If you want to join, help support this channel, check out the exchanges that sponsor this channel. Simple Effects, Bing X, they will pay for your first month in our Discord. Discord. Have any questions about how to join? Any problems? Never used Discord before? Message Lee in the Telegram. That is in the video description as well. And by the way, how'd you like that intro? That song is from High Res. It went viral when he uploaded it just about two weeks ago on YouTube. YouTube pulled it down. So he re uploaded it, got another half million views. And then according to him, YouTube demonetized it. So if you want to support him, I believe in supporting creators. If you want to support him, go to iTunes and download the song, whatever it costs, 69 cents, 99 cents. It hit number one on iTunes. Even if you don't like Orange Man, pretty, pretty damn good song. And I bet none of you knew Lee could dance like that. Yeah, Lee wishes. All right, let's get caught up on the markets, guys. It's been a week. Look at the DXY. It is a rocket ship, 1272 at 104 spot 658. Remember, laying out your fibs correctly, understanding how fibs work. I said if you flip the 618 back at 102, you can see you held it as a base, reject it multiple days in a row. Your bias is to come to the one fib at 103. And you can see the same thing here. You got rejected, got above it, fell below it, and now you shot up, right? This is important. Important to track why a because it's cyclical just like the gfc just like dot com you're going to see the dollar rise it puts pressure on the markets pressure on cryptos pressure on metals important to track ultimate goal here guys 106 spot 040 if you flip the 1272 that's where you're going which puts you right back and the base of this structure here. So you're still in this much larger white call, but this is a lot of pressure on the markets here, which again, for those of you that know from watching this channel, what's coming up guys, end of September, the fall equinox, market tops, market bottoms often occur. Spring and fall equinox, the bottom of uh, .com was October 4th, I believe, just after the fall equinox. The bottom of the GFC was the spring equinox, March 2009. S&P 666. Some interesting information you can learn watching this channel. All right. So what's this doing to the yields? 
Well, I'm not a bond expert, as you guys know, but we covered this last video, and this is the GFC highs. The GFC highs, again, the yields go up, and then they crater because everything resets. So we hit the bottom of our channel, tra trading this clearly defined channel for months now. Let's see if we come up and get a retest of that four spot 5.0 on the five-year. Let's check out the 10-year, same exact situation. This is the GFC highs here. Uh, the GFC highs for the yields, and that's at four spot three three. And you're currently at four spot one eight. Let's see if this continues to rise and put pressure on the markets, or if it starts to roll over. Let's go ahead and look at the euro dollar. Strong DXY, weak euro. And as you can see, we bounced right off the one two seven two at one spot zero seven one three. And again, we've been over this many times, but you had your system of higher lows here in the marketplace. If you lose the 1272 and come down to phi at the 1618, which is at one spot 0560, you've broken your uptrend, okay? Stronger dollar, look for this move to happen. You've broken your uptrend. And then I expect uh, a lot of pressure on the markets if that's the case here. We've been over the Bitcoin chart many, many times. But over the market symmetry, the 60% up moves, the 20% down moves, how beautiful and symmetrical all these moves are. And we talked about it. So I can go ahead and take this off because right now we're struggling. So there's no point in talking about 39K Bitcoin at this juncture because the bias is clearly at this point to try to hold support and see if the markets are intending to roll over here for the fall equinox. So looking at Bitcoin here, we've been over these key support level. Just remember this level, 25K essentially. You need to hold 25K. Why? We've been over this, but you have a macro double top here. Look at the size of this double top, right? If this breaks, this will be sweeping, coming down to retest the lows for Bitcoin, which was 15.5, right? So we can see this as well, just pulling a fib. I'm going to use the impulsive move here, not the exact low. But if you see this here, it's a 618 set 22.2 puts you at the base of this pivot because you're already testing the top of this pivot. You see that? Here's your top and here's where you're finding support right at that 25.283. If you come back down, guys, and you lose the 618 at 22.2, your bias will be to come to the one fib. The one fib is essentially your lows in the marketplace. If you lose that, I told you this many, many months ago, 12, 13K Bitcoin is the next stop to sweep your low. Why would you sweep your low? Because the market has never put in the bottom of the cycle ahead of a recession. Now, speaking of recession, Goldman Sachs just lowered their recession chances for the US to 15%, which is absolutely crazy. We've never had the yield curve inverted like this and not had a recession. We've never had the leading economic indicator displaying they, the way they are, as negative as they are for as many months as they have been without having a recession. So remember, to not have a recession would be the first time since World War II with all of these macro indicators telling you you're getting a recession that we don't have a recession. But if they want to keep your money in the markets, they want to continue to collect their fees, get you to participate in trades and buying companies and getting clients and venture capital... You got to paint the rosiest situation possible. You guys in the U.S. have seen Tom Lee on CNBC a lot lately. Tom Lee, they keep patting him on the back, giving him credit. Wow, you did such a great job calling the rally this year. But what they leave out is in December of 2021, when Tom Lee predicted new all-time highs for 2022. He said the S&P would make a new all-time high, Bitcoin 250K. And what happened? The exact opposite. Bitcoin fell 75 plus percent. The S&P fell 27 percent. The Nasdaq fell 34 percent. Now, I took my money out at the end of 2021, but in January of 2022, Tom Lee was on CNBC and said this could be the bottom. This is... <laughs> In January, this could be the bottom. And he referenced a generational buying opportunity. But today he gets all these pats on his back for this rally in the S&P. And they just brush aside that if you literally bought anything when Tom Lee told you to buy it in the last 
two years, you would be negative, but it doesn't matter. People have short memories. The only way you made money, if you follow Tom Lee's advice this year, was if you deployed new money because everything else you own is negative. Everything. So keep that in mind. Let's look at Bitcoin again. So these are the levels I'm looking at, guys. And again, to the upside, I mean, there's no indication you're going to the upside here, but let's go ahead and pull a new fib and look at this. So you have your support levels, the upside, this is your ETF rally and pump and dump scam. This came all the way up to the 50%, the 486 at 28,000, right? And what happened? As soon as you pumped up, they sold it. Big money sold it into strength, which is why you're right back where you were prior to that. Guys, here's a news flash. Under Joe Biden, you are not going to get ETF approvals. So they won their court case, but what happened? Gensler, the SEC, because Gensler is appointed by Joe Biden, they just postponed the review date or whatever the legal jargon is, but they postponed it again. They're not going to, they, Gensler hates crypto. I was a big poker player and under Obama, he got rid of online poker. See, the government wants to control all the different activities that you can do. Certain things are always going to be fit. Gambling. Oh yeah. Gamble on football, whatever. Sure. You can have that poker. No way. No way. Crypto. That's still a gray area. You need new leadership guys. If you want to call what we have now leadership, it's kind of a joke, but you need new leadership. If you want new things to change and get better in the crypto spot space, let's look at Bitcoin on the daily. Bitcoin on daily again, same exact levels to the upside, guys. If we just pull a simple fib retracement up here from our C wave down to our D wave, you got up to the 46 at 28. That 618, you'd have to flip, which is a lot of congestion here at the 618, as you can see. That's 28,989, then 30,000. Again, nothing showing me this. I'm more concerned about the rollover in the markets and then this losing 25K. And then the descent is on. That's what you really need to pay attention to. So watch that 25K support level. Some scalps in here for sure, but this is very tight, very tight candles. Let's look and see if we have, let's check out one of our market maker Bollinger Bands. And look at this. This is what you need to be aware of. I warned you about this last time, right? When you get that compression, when you get that kind of low volatility, you get explosive moves and it's starting to, it's at the beginning stages of bottling up once again, your 20 SMA is moving down on top of you. It's starting to bottle up. Want to pay attention to this. Okay. Could it be a rebound to the upside? Only if the markets are going up. Most likely, as soon as the markets roll or shortly thereafter, watch for Bitcoin to follow the markets, which means what? Which means you have to track the markets, in my opinion, to have the full picture of what's happening in the crypto space. Let's look at the markets. So the S&P, everything's trying to do a little bit of a rebound today. Most things are still negative. But look at our channel, guys, our channel within a channel, right? The channel within a channel. I shared this. I short it in the Discord at 45.92. Nice drop, whatever that is, 250 points down to your base here. I can't see with this thing in the way. What was that bottom there? 43.36. So a nice 220 points down. So that came back, and now you have what the market put in here. They put in a nice double bottom, a higher low structure, and got rejected where this is all without FIPS, right back at the base of the same channel, right? So we can pull down a FIB from here and see what we're hitting. And you can see we got above the 618. The 786 is slightly higher at 4551. But something else you should look at here. So you have 4551 at 786. That would be a great place. I'd like to find resistance and put a short on the market. Let's just go zoom out here to the all-time high. I want to show you this because this is an important level. So if we pull a simple FIB retracement from the all-time high all the way down to that market low, that 3500 area, Look exactly what you hit. Always be aware of your macro fibs. Look exactly where you hit. 45.35 was the level here that provided that key resistance. You see that? 45.35, you got the 45.40, okay? Within $5 on a $4,500 plus asset. So this is a key area. So I would say between 45.35 and 45.50, that's your key inflection point because what do you have right here? Well, you guys already see it, right? We talk about this all the time. You have a macro double top structure. And if this breaks the neckline, 
down in this area, basically looking at it this way, if you break below 43.11, you have a lot more to go down. I'll show you this with fibs, but you want to watch 45.35 to 45.15. Conversely, obviously, if you flip that, you're back in the channel. And where would I say, because you see this on YouTube right now, see lots of guys have thumbnails, right? And the bearish guys have like big red arrows or they're drawing in the chart and just saying, look, this is the GFC, this is .com. You need to view this as a system of levels because let me tell you how the market moves. If you can take out that high 4609, you're going to probably going to challenge the all-time high. You're not that far away, okay? Conversely, if you start sweeping these lows here, you're sweeping this pivot structure as well at that point. You're in the core of the pivot now. You sweep this low at 4336, maybe you could call it 4311. You sweep this low, you're coming back down, guys. And where are you coming to? Well, this is what I want to show you here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this fib and look at it this way. Go from this base of this rally currently back to the peak. We talked about this the last couple of videos. Depending where you land on this trend channel, 42.10, slightly higher, call it 42.50. Somewhere in here, if you sweep that, that's the golden ratio. If you sweep 4,200, remember we spent a long time in 4,200 over here too. Long time in here to break out, strong pivot area. But if you sweep it, your next stop is 4,000. You sweep 4,000, your next stop is to break the lows, the market lows. Sweeping your lows, because again, you have never put in a bottom prior to a recession in market history, okay? So this is really key how price interacts up here. If you can break this level to 40, 45.35 to 45.50, get on top of it, take out that high at 4,600, you have more upside. But in my view, I've said this many times, but the market is operating on a very defined timeline. We have this new CPI coming out the 13th. Once again, inflation is expected to be hotter. It was hotter this last print. It's expected to be hotter again. Will the Fed raise? Will they not raise? I don't know. The Fed's very political. But you have the CPI, inflation heating up, oil prices going up. You have market history, market cycles, everything at play. So you're on a defined timeline, key inflection point in the market. Be on the lookout for that. Okay. Let's go ahead and bounce over to our pivot pattern. Exact same levels here, guys, I pulled from up here. So 4505 is your 618 pulling from this recent high to your market low, 786 at 4551. And you're just stuck between you're above the 4505 below the 4551. Love to see either a breakdown beneath retest or come up and get some structural problems here at 45.35 to 45.50 and maybe print us a little double top again to go along with this structure, okay? And then your macro double top structure. But lots can happen. We'll see. The market wants to be euphoric overall. That's just how markets are. They want your money in the market. MFI is above the median line. It's a soft bullish move, though. You can see these previous peaks got to, well, this one got overbought here. This one almost did. And you're kind of just rolling over. The thing that you need to notice here, let's look at this. So if we look at, let's change this to the 50. If we look at the 50 moving average for market breadth on the S&P, look at this. Okay. So when you were at this level right here, you see this, this level up here, I'm going to draw a square. 90% of the S&P was above its 50-day moving average. 87% was above the 50. Look how close you are to that level now, and less than half the companies are above the 50. This is very conducive to building a top. Low volume, not a lot of, not broad participation. This is how you build tops. This is why you're struggling in a range right now. So, you know, put your trading hats on if you continue, if you want to find these trades, because these are some good levels to watch. 45.35 to 45.51, if you get any upward movement, in my opinion. Let's look at the NASDAQ. I love just white candles. I color my candles for you guys, but this is how I trade. I just look at white candles because it's easy to see patterns, right? So when I look at my harmonic five-wave projection, we got up to the 2618, as you can see here on the NASDAQ on the weekly. 1618 was some excellent resistance for multiple weeks till we put in a nice double bottom structure. Shot up for our wave three, got above here. 16153 was the 2618. We got to 167. 
771, peak euphoria, and then the big sell-off fell all the way back down below 10,831, and this I have as our fifth wave back up. So let's see what else we have here. Let's look at some more fibs on the NASDAQ. Lots of people asking me in the comments about NASDAQ levels. So let's look at them. Let's just take this rally up here to challenge this rally. And if we look at this, you got right to 15,641. And you can see the structure, once again, that you're building here. If this holds, you're building a nice macro double top on the weekly time frame, right? So where would that potentially go? Not all at once, but what would the trend be if the markets do roll over, the DXY continues to rise, yields continue to rise, uh, you know, lots of different factors in the economy, inflation continues to rise. Let's just look at this, okay, from an impulse. I'm going to use an impulsive move up here on this rally. Not the very low, but the impulsive move up. Well, your 618 is at 12,686. And why is that a key level other than the fact that it's a 618? Because this is your pivot. Look at this. This is your pivot here. So if you lose the 618, you come down. If you lose the 11,802, you'd be retesting this base. Okay. You'd be retesting the low in the market. And then somewhere between 10.6 and 9,250 would be the sweeping of the low in the NASDAQ if you just come down to this level, right? Obviously, you can rally at any fib level, but that would be the overall positioning of the market once it realizes the recession is just not going to magically disappear because you're going to have one like you have every single other time. So the 1618, by the way, the final target here, according to my fibs, would be 7424. Impossible? Well, that just sticks you right back in the middle of the pandemic low slash recovery. Not impossible at all, because why? Trillions, trillions, trillions of dollars of stimulus pumped into the market, gave you this massive meteoric rise across all asset classes, guys, across all of them. And if you look at that rise up 153%, 153% between March of 2020, again, spring equinox, all the way to November of 2021, 153%. Could you give it all back? Absolutely not at all without the realm of possibility. Now, bullish side, what do you have to do? Just like on the S&P, guys, you have to break this recent local high, right? Let me just see what that number is. So you need this double top to not be a double top. Come up, flip 15,937. If you flip 15,937, get your Livermore pivot, try to hold support up here. You're going to be retesting your highs. That's how you can make a new all-time high. View the market and levels, regardless of what your macro picture is, six months, a year from now, view it in levels and trade accordingly. What do I think is going to happen? I think it's going to roll over, but I'm prepared to see if it does do a move like that. We shall see. Let's go ahead and look at the NASDAQ on the daily. Where's a good level, Brendan? You think it's going to roll over? Well, look at your 786, pulling it down from this impulsive move here. Look at your 786, 15546. Now, we know that 15641 is even better if it can come up and get to that 15641 area just slightly above, which is really this wick right here. That would be fantastic. But if it is going to make yet another double top structure, this is what we want to see because this is a macro, much larger double top structure. You always have patterns. Patterns within patterns, depending on the time frames you're looking at, guys. So this is what I'm watching. This keeps retesting. This 15,546. You're 20 points from it right now. We'll see if you can get above it to this level, 15,629. Because again, key level, right? So it's just a key level to watch for here in the marketplace on the daily. And let's go ahead and look at our indicators. MFI, just like the S&P, kind of rolling over. But again, this is the key thing. When I look at indices, look at the breadth. Look at the breadth. This is the 50. I think it's the 50. Let's double check. Yeah, it's the 50. So when you were over here, 90, what is this? 89%, 89% of your companies here, 86, 87% of your companies, just not long ago, guys, just days ago, were above the 50. And now more than half in this quadrant are below the 50. Again, conducive to a top. You have to double, almost double the amount of companies above their 50 just to equal this, okay, to come up to this level. So this is conducive to a top being built. So pay attention to this area and what's happening with the DXY and the yields particularly. Looking at the Russell, Russell rolled over, 
pop back up. Russell almost came up to, uh, what is that level? I think it's the 50 moving average it got to, or just about. Let's go ahead and look. Change this to the simple. Change it to 50. And, yep, we got just above it and fell back below it. Holding the 618 at 1891. All the indices with their little sell-offs, watch for the baby double tops. Again, these are daily time frames we're looking at, but watch for the baby double tops as well, okay? So the markets always move in patterns, guys. This is why understanding patterns, how to trade patterns, having a macro view, but not being biased to it that you can't make money. You, the whole goal of trading is to make money. Make money upside, make money the downside. Bigger money, in my opinion, the biggest money is going to be when the market breaks. And that obviously has not happened yet. We'll see if we have any more recovery to go. Watch 1891 for support, 1859 to the upside. Look at your resistance at 1916, right at that 50, and above it at 1936. And of course, you'd have to take out this high at 2006, 2007 to come up and move up with the other marketplaces if that's what they do looking at apple we talked about this gap i guess a video or two ago right gaps don't matter to me they matter to traders so you see this and we're coming up to fill the gap you see strength in apple at 189 coming up to fill the gap i don't care about apple it's the biggest company it's part of the magnificent seven so i watch it for the health of tech but again to me what apple's doing massive double top okay this can come up higher let's look at this on fibs here we had our larger wave pattern fibs here 1618 at 196 came down to support at 171 just below the 618 now we're pumping back up but let's take a smaller fib project or fib retracement level here and you can see we're above the 618 at 188 the next level of resistance is 192 so if you are trading apple see if you get below 188 because you fall below 188 you're coming back down to that 176 level okay that's where i'd be looking to see apple return to retesting this base area if it starts to roll over and fail conversely you get above that whatever that is 200 get above that level more upside to come let's look at tesla Tesla, I wouldn't say Tesla is easy to trade. It's just predictable. Trading's not easy at all. But Tesla is just predictable. And we threw it in this channel. I've shared trades with you guys here back in this double top region as well. We posted trades in our Discord at different times on Tesla. But when you look at this, it's just trading in a defined tr channel here. There's your base. You could long. Here's your top, you could short, here's your base, you could long, and have multiple tops here, all the way up to in confluence with FIBS, 299, and then of course you dropped all the way down to 211, 207, whatever that is, and now since you hit your base, you're rallying back up, Tesla's at 255. I personally don't do anything really with assets between key FIB levels, 268 being the key upside, 243 your key support, but you see what Tesla does here, but again, everything boils down to macro shapes as well. When the market is ready to give way and ready to roll, be very well aware that you may not get this next kiss up to the next top of the channel. It may break down again from, say, 268 to this massive double top pattern if you believe, as I do, that that's what's going to happen when the market reality sets in about a recession. So be, pay attention to that stuff. Let's look at NVIDIA. Let's throw some fibs on here. Let's get our move on NVIDIA. So we pumped up to the 1272 at 502, like to the penny. Look at that. Holding the support at 480. 480 is a key level. You, you got to stay above 480. You're getting back in this chop here for your top. But guys, let's look at this from a larger perspective here, right? I want to look at this. So just like if you believe in gaps, right? You believe in gaps to the upside, then you got to look at the gaps on the downside. So nothing I say is financial advice, but if I was a holder here, if you bought in here somewhere, like you bought this pullback or I bought this pullback and it got up to where it's at now, I would be either having a super tight stop loss or taking profits because when you look at where this gap is, 318, guys, this is a massive, what is that, 40%? This is a massive drop. Let's go from the peak here. I got to fix that. 37% to right here. 36, 37% just to where you gapped from. That high, that little local high before you gapped up. And actually, if you go to where the gap was, it is about 40%. You see that? 39%. So just be aware of this. You know, you have to understand... <laughs> People in the equity space, right? Like guys that I like, guys that I watch, like Peter Schiff, they all think crypto's a Ponzi scheme. Stocks are no different. None of these companies are worth 
what you're paying for them, right? It's a market. It's a supply and demand market, a FOMO market, a euphoric market, which is why you can have massive runs up, which is why you can have PEs like over 400 for Tesla at its peak, right? Is it a great company? Yeah. Does it mean it's worth that? No, it's not worth that at all. And at the actual share that you have is worth much, much less if you ever look at it, okay? It's not worth what the market is trading it at. That's what you can trade it for. But if Tesla went bankrupt tomorrow, they would pay their they would pay everybody they owe money to, pay all their expenses, pay their legal fees, all that stuff. And if they ever went bankrupt, then you get what's left over in disbursements as shareholders. And not only that, and this isn't I'm not talking about Tesla going bankrupt. Don't misunderstand me. But I'm saying out of everybody as a shareholder, you get almost nothing. Almost nothing. Go look at any of the bankruptcies that have happened historically in the marketplace. So when people tell you crypto is a Ponzi scheme, the whole market's a Ponzi scheme. You can benefit from trading the Ponzi schemes, understand how they work, but just don't get married to something, like get some type of religious fervor over it. It's an asset. Who cares? Make money off of it. So you like AI? Great. But I'm just telling you, this has a big move down that it can do. And if you just look at this guys look from the rise look where this went down to this went all the way down you know this reminds me of dot com cisco cisco systems because everybody says you need cisco technology to have the internet internet's the future cisco was the biggest company in the world during dot com the biggest company in the world and cisco to this day has not made has not defeated its previous high from the dot com era could the same fate be for nvidia i think so because I don't see a company that makes the hardware being the leader in the space of AI. It's going to be the innovators that do the software that come afterwards that I think this is just a euphoric mini bubble that you're seeing happen right now. And guys, if you just look at this from a gap perspective, right, just from where it gapped from, let's just look at this, where this could possibly retrace to 171. At the, five, at the golden ratio, 171. So watch these levels because if NVIDIA starts coming down to 424, bounces up, comes at a 618, the 618 is key. How key is it? Look at this, 376, multiple touches here. Again, this is very key level because if you lose a 618, your bias is to do what? Come to the one fib at 300, which is where you got from your filling the gap. And if you lose the one fib, your bias is to come down to the 1618 at 171. I would hate to be somebody that bought up in this range. Let's just take the current price level, bought at that range and lose 65% after you felt like a freaking genius. Okay. So always just, you know, use your own market views, but I always advise, um, I advise myself since I can't give financial advice, I advise myself, always protect your profits at some level. Let's look at the French 40. French 40, very defined. Once again, guys, not doing a whole lot. Clearly in Wyckoff, again, distribution. But, uh, you know, this will bias will be to distribution, all-time high over here. Bounce off to 618 at 7213. You look at the upside, 7402 is your key resistance area with multiple touches. You're at 7258. DAX is doing almost nothing as well. Still having a problem getting inside this channel. So just looking at this from the recent local high, look at your 618 at 159, 786 at 15969. If you do come back up, see if you come back up to one of those levels for potential yet another rollover to retest these lows once again down here at the 15.4, 15.5 level. Gold more interesting. Gold channel, guys. Remember, I talked about this for weeks on YouTube, posted the trade in the, our Discord, shorted gold at 20.55, got this nice move down all the way, had you held it all this way, to 18.85, bounced back up. But more notably, look at the channel holding up. There's your top, sold off. And look at the same thing, came up in confluence with the 618 FIB at 19.48, sold back off gold at 19.27. Pay attention to this because gold will most likely at some level will try to rebound just like it does on all these previous structures and put in these big double top structures. So there may be another trade coming back up here, maybe at 1934, maybe back closer to 1948. We'll see how the markets behave. But that next level down, let's go ahead and do that. Pull a fib real quick. That next level down, get rid of that one. And let's see this wave up here that we had, this little euphoric move. 
That next level down, 1842 at the 1618, right? 1842. Again, you have levels you'd have to go through for that 1910 at the 618. Sweep that pivot. Lose your one fib at 1884. Then you're looking at 1842. And for now, just look at your local high, that 1950 range for where gold got to. You need to flip that and then come up to the next structure if you want more upside in the metals. The metals are going to move the markets, guys, just like GFC. Been over it many times. Silver struggling at the 618, 24 spot. 59 as you can see once again sold off this is a key inflection area between the 618 and 786 25 spot 27 and 24 spot 59 you keep failing in these ranges okay and again you've just printed a potential double top may come back up for a retest once again we are in choppy volatile markets pay attention to these markets silver follows gold uh, the metals will follow the equities. Bitcoin largely will follow the equities as well. So pay attention to all the markets to have a holistic view of the marketplace. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. I'll try to get you another video this week. If not, most likely will be this weekend at the very latest Monday. Thanks for your patience, guys. I got I can hear people pulling up now. I got to get outside and get back in the sun, work on this tan and do some more cleaning. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Smash the likes and and uh, subscribe as well. See you guys.